Well, as you can well imagine, with a company of the size of General Motors, with our global scope and reach, um, information to support management decision making is essential. And the higher the quality of the information that you receive and you use as the foundation for that decisions that are made, the better the decision quality and then the better business results that come about. We, are, we have um, taken a very aggressive step in the last 12 to 18 months to move forward with implementation of a data warehouse that accommodates not just your traditional structured data and you know the traditional view of a data warehouse, but a multi-platform ecosystem of technologies that can accommodate big data, um, regular traditional RDBMS data, as well as you know basically the foundation is any data required to answer any question at any time. Now we're certainly not there yet today, and that will be a journey that we're you know going to be on for some period of time. But we move very very quickly from where we had infrastructure sitting on a receiving dock um, last year in January to now having multi multiple environments with multiple platforms and running you know, 45, 50,000 load jobs a week into our data warehouse. And you know, as we look forward down the road, we're just planning on streaming sensor data, um, internet-based consumer sentiment data, data from our vehicles into our warehouse to provide advanced intelligence and analytics that would support good decision making as we look at revitalizing the business of GM. Um, there was a couple of things, right? I interestingly, if you go back to 2008, 2009, and the time of the, the GM bankruptcy, you know, that was a, from the inside, a startling event, a startling event from the outside as well. And it really highlighted the need for us to reinvent ourselves and transform the whole company. And not just in terms of big data, but the company from a process standpoint and so on. And Dan Ackerson, who was our CEO at the time, uh, was a huge proponent of having high quality data to be able to make business decisions. And then, of course, about uh, 18 months ago, Randy Mott joined as our CIO, and he brought with him a strong data-driven culture and orientation to data warehousing and you know, big data being a piece of what you would do with a you know, data warehousing program. And you know, I think that it was their vision that turned the corner for us and really stimulated the investment. And I think they've made a bit of a venture capital investment for us, if you think of it that way. And, you know, upfront the investment to get the program off the ground. And it's starting to pay benefits now. And, you know, so we think of them as our investors and they're anxious to get a return on their investment. But I think it was very visionary on their part. And, you know, clearly, uh, for us to run as a more efficient organization, really visibility to the operations across the world is, is essential, right? Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think that the transformation starts with leadership. Um, but in order for the leadership team to be able to drive, you know, an expectation of making data-based decisions, you have to have a foundation upon which to build. It's, you know, if you can't... Um, if you can't make decisions from a data standpoint because you don't have the data, you can have your leaders wanting and desiring that, but it's not effective, right? So we started um, by building a foundation of data and starting to move what we refer to as data marts, which is a generic term for databases used for reporting and the variety of technologies that we have, for everything from you know DB2 and Oracle and just about every data database technology under the sun at Microsoft Access, and you know sometimes we. We often talk about data that's managed in Excel on the desktop as a very important source of information that's used to make decisions. And moving all that data into the foundation then provides the basis for a more decision-oriented culture. And you know, as Mary Barra has now taken over our CEO role, she's expressed an interest in looking at things from an analytics standpoint. And um, I think our leadership is now starting to say, we are beginning to get the capability that we've really wanted for a very long time to see the organization as a, as a whole and the operations as a whole. So it, you're right, it's a journey to change that culture and it's a top down and bottoms up approach. And I think it's, it's gonna take time, but we have a real appetite for that. Well, I think number one is you have to recognize the importance of the upfront investment. Um, you know, you can try to justify it with a business case, and there are a lot of good, strong business cases that can be built based on better decision making and access to information, better responsiveness to your customer base, all of those types of things. I think you have to trust the vision. And, and you start small, but start small with the notion of 
scalability being an important concept. So, you know, our approach, even if for a company of our size, wasn't to overinvest up front. Invest at the right size to, to seed the process, but make sure that your design, your technology selections, your architecture is very scalable. Um, so that as you grow, you can grow the investment along with it so that your investment is somewhat aligned with the commensurate benefits that start to, start, you start to achieve. I, I think it's good, and I'm getting to know more about it personally. Um, I know some of my colleagues have been working more directly with Wayne State than I have in my past um, you know, on recruiting activities and that sort of thing. Um, as we've built an insourced organization, and you know, part of our transformation has been uh, to move from a 90% outsourced organization to a 10% outsourced organization over a course of a, you know, a couple of years, it's a huge transformation. And you know, building a relationship with schools such as Wayne State is absolutely essential. And then you know, more and more, um, I think the notion of co a combination of strong technical skills to understand the the data side of the and the technical side of big data and data analytics along with the business driven uh, business acumen and business driven skill sets to be able to combine those things then you bring value to the business when you can understand how to apply the technology to solve business problems and to answer important questions from the from the business so i think that those programs are are the wave of the future especially as you look at um, you know, the internet of things, you know, a sensor data, streaming data analytics and some of those technologies. And you start looking at data, not in, in terms of megabytes or gigabytes or terabytes, but petabytes and zettabytes eventually. The, gro the growth rate of data is enormous. And our leadership team and success in the industry we're in and other industries are going to be dependent upon your ability to sort of distill intelligence from all of that data. You know what, I absolutely do. And I think, you know, at one point in time, you, you, people would think about data and you think about a database and you think about a DBA and a very sort of narrow technical role where you're hands-on administering a database and working on, on the technical aspects of that database and not really having the business context. Um, big data brings with it some very interesting emerging technologies. So as you look at what we're doing with NGM as an example, we're out pushing our vendors and pushing open source communities and taking advantage of open source technologies. A good example is our Hadoop infrastructure that we've built. So you're leading on the technical edge, but, but at the same time, we're back working with our business partners and really trying to understand how to best apply these technologies to solve important business problems. And that's, you know, at least from my perspective in my career, one of the most satisfying things is when you can bring technology and business together to solve business problems and actually make meaningful results and a uh, meaningful difference in driving results. And a company the size of, of GM is, you know, not very many opportunities to do that kind of thing. And this is an area where we're clearly growing, we're investing, and partners I see in the industry are doing the same thing. And, you know, I think the ability to understand and distill knowledge and information from the noise of the data that's starting to churn in, in the world is going to be an ex exceptionally important skill set. And it combines, you know, business knowledge with and you know the ability to understand the problems you're solving with a very uh, progressive technology platform in which to work. So I think that would be very interesting for most most people.